most gracious, most merciful. The Muslim minority in Myanmar mostly consists of the Rohingya people and the descendants of Muslim immigrants from India, including what is now Bangladesh. And China, the ancestors of Chinese Muslims in Myanmar came from the Yunnan province, as well as descendants of earlier Arab settlers. Indian Muslims migrated to Burma during British rule to fill jobs in the expanding economy, especially in clerical work and business. After independence, many Muslims retained their previous positions and achieved prominence in business and politics. According to Human Rights Watch, the Burmese government has denied citizenship to any Rohingya person who cannot prove their ancestors settled in the country before 1823, the beginning of British occupation of what is now Iraq and states. According to Amnesty International, the Muslim Rohingya people have continued to suffer from human rights violations under the Burmese junta since 1978, and many have fled to neighboring Bangladesh as a result. Despite earlier efforts by the UN, the vast majority of Rohingya refugees have remained in Bangladesh, unable to return because of the regime in Myanmar. Hello and welcome to the program Insight with me, Esther Nanetta Blatin. When we come back, we will further examine Burma or Myanmar in flame with Mohammed Ibrahim, the Media Secretary of European Rohingya Council, the ERC, live from Germany. So stay with us. Mohamed, hello and welcome to the program Insight. Mohamed, do you have my yeah. voice? Yeah. Welcome to the show. Mohamed, my first question is, when did the tension between the extremist Buddhists and the Rohingyas, and wh what was behind the sectarian violence in Myanmar? There are a few serious conspiracies behind the sectarian violence in Myanmar. The first one is direct by some member of Tenzing government, including Tenzing himself, and some member of military. And they are doing this because they want to create a political excuse to grasp the power because they are afraid of losing their grips on power after election in 2015. Tenzing definitely is one of this conspirator. In addition, he wants to be more popular than Aung San Suu Kyi among majority Buddhists by oppressing Muslims as he knows that most of the Burmese Buddhists are chauvinists. Rakhine politicians are also firmly behind this violence because they are afraid of the Muslims, especially Rohingya, can get upper hand both in politics and business if they will get equal rights when the real democracy comes to Myanmar. So they want to make Rohingya like refugees or illegal migrants. However, every Buddhist political force, including opposition, want to get rid of Muslims in the country. In other words, they want to Myanmar free of Muslims. Mm. Okay. Now, uh, we've mentioned earlier and uh, identified who are the Rohingyas, but in your own words, will you tell us again who actually are the Rohingyas? Yeah, this is the it's long history. Uh, this is the, I can just say in the little bit, uh, the people know in shortcuts. Uh, the Rohingyas are one of the most persecuted communities in the world, although they have been living in this state of Arkan since the 7th century which is now part of Burma. The Rohingyas have been under extreme scrutiny by the Burmese government. They haven't been recognized as a citizen of the Union of Burma since 1962, coup dictated by General mm -hmm. Nevin. After decades of oppressing and marginalization, the passing of the 1982 citizenship law deemed them officially stateless. Also, I can say that Rohingyas are son of Arabs, uh, Persians, shuttles that come to Arkan as early as the 7th century. 
Now, uh, Mohamed, we mentioned that since 1978, the Rohingya Muslims have been suffering human rights violations under the Burmese junta. What are the authorities yeah. doing since then? We have ample of hard of evidence that authorities are behind this uh, cannabis. In many cases, fire brigades, for example, use petrol instead of watering while they were called to help when hoses were set on fire. Police and other law enforcement agencies have blocked Muslims from putting the fire off. In fact, many Muslims who came to help others were shot dead on site while Buddhist terrorists were supplied with lethal weapons. Okay. Now, Human Rights Watch says tens of thousands of Rohingya refugees are currently staying in makeshift camps in Bangladesh, with many living in conditions that seasoned aid workers have described as the worst they have ever seen. And as a result of this violence, UN says 20,000 homeless after the Myanmar clashes. And of course, it is, I think, worth mentioning that since 2012, 180 people have been killed during the clashes between the Rohingya Muslims and extremist Buddhists, and more than 100,000 Muslims displaced. What do you think will become of these people, Mohammed? Yeah, well, the uh, world is doing nothing in the uh, practical terms. Only few countries are giving some leave service, while a few countries are helping Burmese government financially. This is financial help to turn is encouraging terrorists to commit more crimes against Muslims because they know that he wants the situation of our Muslims to become the more they get. Diplomatic countries are competing against, against uh, each other to be more friendly with Burmese government to fulfill their self interest. Also, the Burmese government is creating more and more weapons to use it. Human rights watch says tens of thousands of Rohingya refugees are currently staying in the makeshift camp in Bangladesh. Many living in conditions that seasoned aid workers have described as the worst they have ever seen. As the result of this violence, UN says 120,000 homeless after Myanmar clashes. Now, Mohammed, obviously, the silence of world organizations, especially the United Nations, behind the abuse against the Rohingya Muslims has obviously emboldened the Buddhist extremists and the Myanmar authorities. What's your take on this? Is there any political agenda behind this? Yeah, this is, uh, as I mentioned it before, there is a clear political agenda behind this. Even actor has their own agenda in addition to their common agenda of reducing Muslim population in the country. Opposition is eyeing next election. So they don't want to uh, alienate majority voters by f voicing against genocide of Muslims. Aung San Suu Kyi is the sacrificing Muslim for her dream. She has already forget, uh, mm -hmm. forgot that she is a noble laureate. Now, Mohammed, uh, Press TV had been started covering the issues or the news about the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar uh, from last year, that is barely a year. Now, what do you think is the role of the world media about these atrocities? Yeah, uh, the world media uh, is taking the most majority roles. Uh, they can show the, the world community. Also, they can take the interviews uh, to, to the who's the operating to the world. Also, the United Nations. Also, the, uh, uh, they can ask everybody. Uh, they can show the, our cost to the international community in front of in international communities. Thank you. Now, uh, Mohammed, personally, how do you find the future of the Rohingya Muslims amid all these tensions and atrocities? Uh, I uh, I have actually no idea of what will happen to these people or who will save them. We don't have any hope or trust on this opposition that is dancing on the tone of dancing regimes. But I'm sure that one day we will come out of this conspiracy. I want to say that it will be more Polish of dancing and his 
complices, Buddhist terrorists, to think that they can exterminate us from the soil of our country. Now, as media secretary of the European uh, Rohingya Council, as far as you're concerned, what do you expect the international bodies to do about the Rohingya issue? As the as the organizations, uh, my dem our demand is uh, it is uh, not finished problem in inside the Myanmar. It will be expected every city, every corner in the Myanmar. So the authority is doing nothing. Authority just helping the people who are the uh, propaganda involved propaganda. We are demanding to international community to send to the UNAP force force to the Myanmar in, in the Arakan state and then save the lives of innocent, uh, innocent humans. Well, will you tell us also a bit, um, an idea about the, um, your own organization as the media secretary of the European Rohingya Council? The European Rohingya Council itself, which is active in Germany, I believe, what do you do about the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar? Well, uh, we have some sources in the, in, in the ground. We take the sources from the ground and uh, we publish the news, we write the articles, and uh, we send to the media information uh, up day by day and uh, uh, point to point. And also, we send, uh, sometimes we send also the uh, statement in our press release to the international community. Also, the, uh, also we uh, go in, the, in front of the uh, European Parliament here in the Brussels uh, many times demonstration against this is violence and also uh, we are there meeting here uh, the, the foreign ministers in the european countries also the media so we are encouraging to them to take the voice uh, to the risk with their media or the government to, to stop this violence to, to give the pressure lights to the Myanmar government as soon as possible to stop this violence okay I would like to thank you so much, Mr. Mohammed Ibrahim, the Media Secretary for European Rohingya Council, for being with us today. Thank you very much indeed. Stay with us. You're we'll right back. The United Nations warned tens of thousands of Rohingya Muslims living in squalid flood-prone camps in western Myanmar after fleeing communal unrest face imminent danger from looming monsoon rains. An estimated 125,000 Rohingya and other Muslims have languished in insanitary camps since violence flared last year with ethnic Rakhine Buddhists leaving scores dead and whole neighborhoods in ruins. John Ging of the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs said, They are now in imminent danger of yet another tragedy when the monsoon rains hit. We must act immediately to prevent a predictable tragedy. With the monsoon expected to start in May, King called on the government to release new land for camps and to help rebuild shattered community relations, highlighted by the deadly outbreak of anti-Muslim violence in central Myanmar this month. King's comments follow allegations by rights groups that humanitarian aid to the Rohingya is being restricted by Myanmar's authorities. Curbs on relief to the camps are creating a crisis that will become a disaster when the rainy season arrives, according to Phil Robertson, Deputy Asia Director at Human Rights Watch. Medical aid agency Doctors Without Borders has said a lack of clean drinking water in the camps has caused skin infections, worms, chronic coughing and diarrhea. And I think that's all the time we've got. That's a wrap for yet another edition of Insight. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye and God bless.